gents, can you pull up some system curves that you feel sound nice? I'm finding I like the bass oh, way man. hot. <laughs> oh, man. What others? That's what, what else? I've been doing for the past three days. Uh-oh. Crazy. Just experimenting and happened? trying to figure out, like, what is the, cor you know, what's the correct target curve? <laughs> I mean, I'm not happy when somebody just says, yeah, just it's what preference, you know, whatever you like. <clears throat> Like, no, nah, there's got to be a more correct one. What is the more correct way to do it? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I've been experimenting with different ways of finding out what the uh, what the target curve sh should be, specifically with regards to bass. Where, you know, how should the how how high should you increase the bass? Is it some, something that's arbitrary completely or is there something that's more correct? Right. Because I think I mean, we agree that if you put it to four plus 40 like Chana had it, it's a, it might be a little bit too much. <laughs> that curve looked a little weird. Doing. He had some junk in the trunk down there, boy. I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I just agree on that. So, so, like, whenever I would run Odyssey, I would just go, you know, I have to um, put the, the subwoofer level matching. So it's like 75 dB to 77 dB or whatever. And then after that, I'm like, man, this is whack. I just go back there and just do, 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 put it up a couple of notches on the back of the sub and couple. then just be like, all right, yeah. that's it. So and then, and then and then if you put it too low, right? I think everybody would start saying, ah, that's a, uh, a little bit more bass, right? Yeah. And I think everybody would start converging on a particular level. Now, mm -hmm. you know, why is the question? Like, why would we all agree that this is the right amount of bass? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that's exactly like, oh, it's got to be 9.2 decibels. Follow the Harmon curve. Um but what do you think? You guys have any ideas as far as like what that's related to? Like, what is the base rise related to? Mm -hmm. Anybody? We don't know. There's no. It seems like if you're just doing it like guessing or like by ear, it's just completely arbitrary, right? There's no I, form uh, like a reference point, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I I have I happen to believe that the base rise that you would want is related to. How much your room naturally adds, right? Yeah, I think there's probably some truth to that. I also think that it probably has a lot to do with how smooth the response is too. Meaning that, like, if you have, like, if your bass isn't that smooth, then you may be boosting it a little bit more than some others might in order to get some kind of frequency, or you may be cutting it some more than others might in order to get rid of a an issue. You know, so like, I think if everybody's were roughly lined up the same. You know what I mean? Like in terms of just smoothness, not level, but smoothness, then I imagine that most people would probably be within, I don't know, maybe like three decibel of each other or something. But who knows, man? I don't it's know. It's very interesting. This is an interesting topic to me because you have some <sighs> rooms where the base rise starts really early, mm -hmm. right? Smaller um, rooms, yeah. Smaller rooms. You get this like base rise. It starts like 250. <laughs> you start right. seeing it uh, rise, right? And then some mm -hmm. of the larger rooms, you notice that it's more of just like a gradual like line, right? Which way? This way. Um, instead of one that, that kind of goes up quickly and then flattens out. Yeah. And so let's say if you have a room where it's more of a gradual rise and then you use a target curve where it rises earlier 250 and flattens out. So you're actually giving it more um, mid-base, you know, starting more in the mid-base, upper base region. You're adding more to that. Is that more correct? I don't know. Would that be correct? Because you're you're trying to give a large room the same base as a smaller room. And I don't know if that sounds good or sounds natural or I don't know. Mm -hmm. Any idea? Yeah. Aaron? Like what's more correct in that case? No, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank, to be honest with you. I'm <laughs> kind of looking at the chat. Um, yeah, no. It's just something that I've been really... Uh, seriously, past three days I've been thinking about this, staying up real late. Yeah, like in car audio, I mean, people mess around with curves all the time. And I've got a friend who sent me a curve the other night, and his 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 response was uh, it's crazy. It was his response is pretty good until about eighty hertz. Like I mean, pretty neutral until about eighty hertz, and then it took off. And I was like, dude, what are you doing with the sub? And it had to be like twelve dB hotter than the rest of the response. And he said, I don't know, man, but I like it. And he's been doing this for a while. And I was like, huh? All righty. He said, it doesn't pull. And I was like, uh, I'm pretty sure something's not right there. Like, that just seems way too hot. You know, but like, then I think, what's 
what's like where's your starting point where's your end point for that for that curve right so if you start at 20 hertz and you your your end point is 20 kilohertz is it just smooth all the way down or do you like a little bit of a drop to the mid-range and then flatten out from there i've seen all sorts of different responses from home audio and car audio man and i just think a lot of the times people are reiterating over and over trying to get a response that sounds right and they're messing with curves but a lot of times in my experience it's issues um like especially car audio there's like bass issues that they're trying to resolve through a curve but it's like some kind of resonance or something's rattling somewhere and you know they haven't worked that out mm. and then once you work that out and kind of smooth that out then your need for having the bass gained up really high or gained down really low to hide some of those issues is gone if that makes sense so yeah i mean yeah i don't know so i think uh general consensus is smooth bass right so if you have a bunch of you know ups and downs in the bass area you probably want to smooth that out right but how right. wide let's say if you have a big old dip there in the response that you maybe can't fill <coughs> and so where is that limit i think it's just it's a it's very it's a very it's tricky, uh yeah. area and so yeah. i don't know if anybody has an answer there but i think my conclusion is starting to be that you should follow the response of your room and maybe up to a certain point, try to make it just smoother. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of the conclusion I'm coming to. But we'll see. I might change yeah. my mind. So I, I think that kind of goes back to that conversation we had a couple weeks ago when we were talking about um, house curves and uh -huh. high frequency. And I was saying, like, I, I would let your speakers dictate that roll off you know like so instead of if you have frequency or if you have speakers that want to roll off early uh and they and they're more narrow in the room mm -hmm. then in the room the response is going to be rolled off you know let's say four kilohertz it's just going to start tanking off mm -hmm. uh but if you see a curve or somebody else says well i like this curve and it doesn't start rolling off until 10 kilohertz and then you start going into eq and everything up then you're introducing distortion so i think a lot of it does have to do with how your speakers are naturally and and then you kind of just like that's the choice that you made with that speaker, right? And if if that's not the curve that you like, then it's time to find new speakers. But I don't think it's always a good idea to make your speakers match a predetermined curve if you don't have any insight on what's going on with those speakers. I think you wind up creating more issues in the long run. All right, everybody, we do the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you join up to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily hi-fi, and we will see you there for the big show every Monday. Yeah.